All right, we're going to continue with the appendicular skeleton uh, now. And we're going to start with the pectoral girdle, which is here, uh, or also known as the shoulder girdle. Uh, makes an incomplete ring. It supports your upper limb and is an attachment site for many muscles. Uh, composed of two scapulae, which uh, we call the shoulder blades, and then two clavicles, which is also known as your collarbones. Uh, the collarbones is an elongated S-shaped bone located at the base of the neck that function to brace the scapula. Uh, provide attachment sites for muscles that move upper limbs. Now, it's, what's funny is that the sternoclavicular uh, joint right here is actually the only real attachment that your upper extremities have to your trunk. So it's just right here that's the major attachment. Everything else is held on by muscles and ligaments. But as far as bone is concerned, the clavicle attaches to the sternum at the sternoclavicular joint right there. The clavicle is one of the most commonly fractured bones in the body. So here it is. Here is the scapula. Here is the humerus. And here's the clavicle. So again, the sternoclavicular joint, the sternum and clavicle, sternoclavicular joint, is only the real attachment that your upper extremity has to your trunk. Everything else is held together by muscles and ligaments. The scapula itself, uh, the shoulder blade, is a broad triangular bone on either side of the upper back. A spine, so if you were to push right here, divides the posterior scapula into unequal portions. The spine ends with the acromion process, which is right here, which articulates with the clavicle. The acromion process forms the tip of the shoulder. The coracoid process is a little bit lower, like if you push right here, ah! provides attachment sites for limb and chest muscles. And the glenoid cavity or fossa articulates with the head. So the scapula has this fossa where the head of the humerus fits right in there. And that's called the glenoid cavity or fossa. So there it is. If you were to look at the articulations, right? Superior angle, coracoid process, the acromion, the spine of the scapula, the glenoid cavity is where the head of the humerus sits. Now, remember these words, supraspinous, infraspinous, because when we study muscles, you'll know that there's a supraspinatus muscle, there's an infraspinatus muscle. So a lot of times um, you learn it one time, it can carry over to other chapters. Okay, there's the caracoid process. There's the chromium process here. Now the upper limb itself, right? So the upper limb, bones of the upper limb form the framework of the arm, which is here, the forearm, which is here and the hand provide for muscle attachments. So we have 30 bones in the upper limb, humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. The radius, the way they remember, if you're in the anatomical position, remember the radius is on the thumb side. Okay, so rad, radical dude. So thumb up, radius, and the pinky and the ulna match up. The humerus is a long extending uh, bone from the scapula to the elbow. So that's the arm, what we call the arm or the humerus. It articulates with the scapula at its head. Articulate means join with the radius at the capitulum and with the ulna at the trochlea. So you want to know where this attachment is, like learn this terminology. So I put it in bold. Uh, other features include the greater and lesser tubercles, intertubricular sulcus, anatomical and surgical necks, deltoid tuberosity, two condyles, capitulum, two epicondyles, coronoid fossa, and olecranon fossa. So if you look at this, here it is. Here's the head. Here's the anatomical neck. Here is the surgical neck. All right, so just to kind of uh, play off the anatomical neck and the surgical neck, the anatomical neck is more for anatomical purposes, right? So there's attachments around here. But the surgical neck is where more fractures happen and clinically significant. It's where surgeries can occur if they have a proximal fracture of the head of the humerus right here. Rare to see a fracture up here. Very common to see a fracture here. Hence the word surgical neck. Okay. Uh, greater tubercle, uh, intertubricular sulcus, your, um, the tendon of the biceps can go through here. Uh, the lesser tubercle, you have a deltoid tuberosity, so the deltoid comes down and will attach uh, uh, via tendon here. 
This is the anterior view. This is the posterior view. Um, if you look at the anterior view, it's usually a little bit rougher and the posterior is smooth. Um, here is the capitulum, the trochlea. So anatomical position, you'll see the radius and the capitulum line up and the ulna and the trochlea line up here. The olecranon fossa is where the head of the, I'm sorry, the olecranon process will go through. So if you were to look right here, that's the olecranon process and that's my ulna right there. So that's my elbow. The radius is located on the thumb side, lateral side of the forearm, extending from the elbow to the wrist. The disc-like head of the frac uh, radius articulates with the capitulum of the humerus and the radial notch of the ulna allows rotation. Okay. Other features of the radius include the radial tuberosity and styloid process. The ulna, which is the longer of the two bones, um, it's on the it's lateral to the radius or if you were to look at this in if you anatomical position then it'll be medial to the radius but if I'm looking at it this way then it's lateral but if I'm looking at it this way in anatomical position it's medial uh, so it depends on the the perspective but we always reference like I told you the um, anatomical positioning so if I'm in the anatomical position then the ulna is going to be medial and the radius is going to be a lateral. Okay. Um, the trochlear notch that articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. Other features include the olecranon process, coronoid process, head, and styloid process. The distal end head articulates with the ulnar notch. So you're like, oh, there's a lot of words here. Well, let's look at the let's look at the diagram. Some of you are visual learners. Uh, it makes better sense for me to point this out. So again, this is the radius. In the anatomical position, it's found on the lateral side. The ulna is medial. Uh, here's the head of the radius. Here's the electron process, which I was telling you is the, the bump right here. The trochlear notch where the humerus will fit. The trochlea will fit right here. The capitulum fits right here. Um, here's the radial tuberosity where your biceps tendon will attach. Here's the styloid process. Here's the ulna, the head of the ulna, the styloid process right in there. The hand consists of the wrist, palm, and fingers. The entire wrist is made up of eight carpal bones, which are right here. Allows for wrist flexion extension. Okay. The framework of the hand is made up of five metacarpals, and the fingers each compose of three phalanges, proximal, middle, and distal. The thumb only has two. Okay, proximal and distal, no middle uh, phalange there. So it makes a total of 30 um, bones in the upper extremity. If you were to look at the hand right here, you can see the metacarpals, the phalanges, proximal, middle, distal, and the carpals. Um, they go from, so if you were to look right here, and then you can kind of see this little divot here. This is actually called the anatomical snuff box. Right in there is where your scaphoid bone sits. So if you look at the scaphoid right there. And the acronym, um, I mean my anatomy teacher taught me this many moons ago, but the way that we remember is some lovers try positions that they can't handle. You're thinking, well, that's kind of risque. Well, I know, but <laughs> it, it, you remember it. So um, scaphoid is some, right? So scaphoid. Lovers is lunate. Tri is the triquetrium. Positions is piece of form. So that's the first row, right? The proximal row. The distal row is that they can't. And then handle is the hamate right here. Okay. So the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, capitate is near your middle finger, which is number three, okay? Uh, and then your hamate is fourth and fifth. So try to remember that. If you're like, oh, I don't like the acronym, that's fine. Just remember it as scaphoid, lunate, triquetrium, pisiform, right? So that's the proximal row and the distal row is trapezium, trapezoid, uh, capitate, and hamate. All right.